Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 13. Thus saith the Lord God, This shall be the border, this is the millennial kingdom, of the land of Israel. It's not called the land of Palestine in the Bible. Right now it's, it's a mixed land. It sure is not the holy land. Not with all the sin, not with the Roman Catholics and the Arabians running around in it. Whereby ye shall inherit the land according to the twelve tribes of Israel. It's interesting because Esau is twelve dukes. Ishmael, uh, 12, I forget what he was. Joseph shall have two portions. Now remember, the Levites are not given the inheritance. Their inheritance is the tabernacle, the temple, and God. So what you have here is Joseph is split into his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. He shall inherit it. And this is the Jewish heaven. The Jewish heaven is not going to heaven and be in God's presence of the angels and soon to be the new Jerusalem. The inheritance for the Jew is that piece of land. And then I believe when, when the eternity comes, the new Jerusalem for the Christian, there's a new earth. I believe that goes to the Jew and Abraham and his descendants of Isaac and Jacob. I believe the new heavens goes to the Gentiles. Like Noah. Enoch. They weren't Jews. First Jew is Abram. And the Jewish race, according to God, is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What do you do with Shem? What do you do with those Gentiles that did right even during the law? I believe they get the earth. There are Gentiles that will come out of the tribulation. They'll be blessed because of their conduct to Israel. And if they do well in the millennial kingdom. See, there's the church, there's the Gentile, and there are Jews. Right now, we're looking at the Jews. The Catholic Church tries to run around. We, You know, in the name of the Pope, we're going to conquer land. That's... Replacement theology, that's something for Israel, not Gentiles. When the, the, the black cats came over on the Mayflower and settled in Massachusetts, and they became the Congregational Church, and they had the, the Israel sign of the times, and all the laws, and you couldn't do nothing on the Sabbath, that is covenant theology as in, we're to Israel. God's done with them. Bless us. And that happened in Utah, where you got Mount Zion, the Salt Sea, and multiple marriages. That's people saying, we're Israel. God's all finished with the Jews. Let's go out and conquer in the name of God. The Crusaders, the Muslims do the same thing. If you don't come to Allah, we're going to chop your head off. Yeah, that's part of the law of God. If you Go in there and wipe them all out, but Allah is not God. And the descendants of those who follow Allah are not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they are a seriously sin. It all comes down to a piece of land. Oh, we got COVID in America, we got COVID in England, and Taiwan wants to be free, and Korea is launching missiles, and we're back in Jerusalem. And the Queen's family is all messed up, and this 
this soap opera star dies and there's a fire in California and we're back to the Holy Land. Missiles are being launched at the Jews. And Florida's getting a hurricane and the Mexicans are coming across the border and Donald Trump is still crying and he lost the election to sore loser and we're back over Israel for some kind of story. And a Russian nuclear submarine sinks in the, in the seas. And there's an uprising in Africa. And we're back to Israel. And the United Nations says, Israel, you got to give up some land for these people. you got to give up some land for these people. And we'll get... It's about a land. And this land is heaven to the Jews. And they're going to get the land. If anybody says God's all finished with the Jews, that land, this land is my land, this land is your land. It ain't about America. It's about a piece of land, not the, not the land of Palestine. It's a piece of land called Israel. They may not have it all now, but they will. There's only one king that had the extent of this kingdom, even further than what we're going to look at now, Solomon. It said that his kingdom actually went all the way up to the river Euphrates. It went down all the way down south. David started to build that kingdom. But when Solomon decided to get a thousand wives of every god and every sort of god and any god and worship all the other gods, they started losing. And even still, when Solomon was in the land, there was still the people that God told them in, in Joshua's time, wipe them out. And they didn't wipe them out. King Saul, I got a job for you. What's that, sir? I want you to go kill and destroy completely Amalekites. All right. So what did you see? I, I saw Saul. He leaned upon his sword, and he cut. And he looked at me. He said, I'm not going to survive. So I killed him. Who are you? I'm an Amalekite. So we're looking at a piece of land here. I believe of the Bible, the King James Bible. This land belongs to Israel and they're going to get it. And when they're going to get it, it's going to be absolute great blessing. The fact is, you're going to be able to plant tomatoes in the morning and in the morning you're going to get tomatoes. You're going to be able to grab a lion and lay down with that lion. Get the paramatic and all like Daniel. And that lion ain't going to eat you. And the Bible says a child is going to walk down the street. He's going to have a, a panther. He's going to have a, a serpent. He's going to have all these animals. And they're not going to hurt him. The only thing that remains under the curse when the curse is removed is that serpent. He don't get no legs. He shall inherit it. Inherit means you get it legally. When it's yours legally. One as well as another. Concerning the which I lifted up my hand. That's God speaking. When God lifts up his hand, I swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth will help me make. That's God. When, when God gets up and makes an oath, so help me me, and he makes that oath, you. You know why they don't put the Bible in the courtroom? Because they fear, because the Bible says, you're guilty. Even that judge that sits on the seat, you're guilty. Why would you want to put in the court, thou shall not steal? All right, next case, this guy is a thief. Ah, uh, I can't read it. Why would you not want to put a sign that thou shalt not commit adultery? There was a time in America if you committed adultery against your spouse, you were brought to the court and you went to jail. Boy, things have come the wrong way. Actually, some states still have that law, but they just don't obey it. Like there's a law in, in Daytona Beach that they don't follow. It's in the books. It's illegal to spit on the sidewalk in Daytona Beach. You got so many laws, you don't even follow the law. You can't talk on the cell phone. That's a law. <laughs> you ain't got enough police to enforce it. And with this land, with the, the, the legal right, comes the law. 
the law is coming back in, in, in Israel in the tribulation period. And the devil is going to, through the Antichrist, is going to, is going to rush these Jews out of the land to a place prepared. And, I, and this land shall fall unto you for inheritance. Like, fall. That's an interesting word because when we go into the millennial kingdom, the curse is removed. That began with the fall of Adam and Eve. When the Jews go back into that land, we are back like it was back in the Garden of Eden. I wonder if Adam and Eve are going to be here in the millennial. And I wonder if they're going to have to have some explaining to do. Adam and Eve won't be judged yet. The church will be judged at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. Adam and Eve won't be judged yet at the, to the great white throne judgment. The only thing that has been judged is the nation when Jesus stomps on them and their blood goes upon his, his, his garments and the horse's bridles and are cast into hell. The Jews have been clean and exalted and, and, and washed of their sins and given a new heart and a new spirit. David and Solomon and Noah and Adam are going to be people in this millennial kingdom. The fall. The Holy Spirit properly uses word. The Holy Spirit, when he wrote the Bible using holy men, Holy Spirit wrote it. He said, David write this, Solomon write this, and so on. It's written by absolute authority and inspiration of God. And the Holy Spirit is not playing Scrabble when he wrote the Bible. Oh, I got an A, I got an L, I got an F, and an L. Uh, oh, 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 I say, no, that's not enough points. That's not the Holy Spirit. The words are chosen properly and correctly. And when you got a modern Bible of Alexandria, Egypt, which God says, get out of Egypt, don't go back to Egypt. When they correct the Bible, adding, subtracting, footnoting, you ruin the cross-reference. After all, the Amplified Bible in 1 John 5 took away the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Well, you can't go back, even though they put the Word in John 1.1, 1, 1, you lost the, the cross-reference. I'm not going to bother with it. I wanted that word fall is in the modern Bibles because that brings us back to Genesis 3. There was a land inherited to Adam and Eve. There's a land inherited to Israel. And this shall be the border of the land. Here we go. Don't you go, I'm not going to say anything about Christmas. Sorry. And this shall be the border of the land toward the north side. All right, this is up north. And it would help if my Bible is open. Okay. North. From the great sea, that is the Mediterranean Sea. The way of Hethlon, as men go to Zedad, Hamath, Bethan, Sabrim, which is the which is between the border of Damascus, that's Syria. That's where the apostle Paul was going as Saul to persecute the church, and the border of Hamath. Hazer Hatakan, which is the coast of Haran. Some of these might be able to find in a Bible dictionary. And the border from the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, shall be Hazer Enon, the border of Damascus. And we're going all the way up to Syria. You notice how Syria has been making the news a lot? You know, the refugees, God would get rid of the refugees and say, hey, that land belongs to Israel. United Nations, no, no, don't. The United Nations will be in hell. They'll have no say. 
If I could stand before the United Nations, I would give two messages. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And that land belongs to Israel. And you get the people out of there. You get the Gentiles out of there. You get the Philistines out of there. You get the Catholics out of there. You get the Ravens out of there. And anybody who launches any missiles or any attacks on Israel, you're going to get a taste of all our 24 missiles from all our nuclear submarines. That's what I would do, Mr. President. Mr. President, yeah, so, uh, they attacked Israel. Get every Jew out of there and prepare our submarines. In 10 hours, we're going to launch every single missile from whoever attacked Israel. And you bring those submarines back, we'll refill those submarines. Anybody else attacks Israel? You got a problem with the PLO? You got a problem with those things? Clear out the Jews from the area. Nuke that area. Clean it out. Send the army in there. Send the, send the CBs in there. Rebuild the whole area. And say, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, come into this land. It's all yours. I put a navy in the Marine, on the Mediterranean Sea to protect them. I put the Marines and the armies all around the borders of Israel to protect them. I have the Air Force flying over protecting them. The heck with the other, you know, heck with China, heck with, with, I protect Israel because if I protect Israel as a nation, God's going to protect us. I tell the United Nations, pack your bag, get out of New York, you got 45 days, and then that building is going to be blown up, torn up. Fired up. No one ever going to be in that spot in the United Nations. And by the way, pay all your parking tickets. You owe, you owe the city of New York tons of money for parking tickets. Get out of here and pay your tickets. And don't mess with us. We stand on Israel. I'll tell you what would happen. I'd be assassinated. Don't tell me about the KKK because they don't like the Jews. Well, the heck with the KKK. They can't be Christians. They can't be saved if they're talking against God's people. Anybody hurt those Jews? Anybody hurt the synagogues? Instant, instant, instant capital punishment for a person that hurts those Jews. Right there on the spot. It's all about Israel. Like Paul, I, I, I pay for a missionary that's in Israel for Bibles and literature to get those Jews to get saved. And this land is a land that God says he's going to give it to them. I believe it. And the northward toward the border of Hamath, and this is the north border. That's north. That's up north. Top. And the east side shall be shall measure from Haran and from Damascus and from Gilead and from the land of Israel by the Jordan. That's the that's the river Jordan. So the eastern border of, of Israel is the Mediterranean Sea. The western border of Israel is the Jordan River. The northern border is Damascus. You got the uh, Philistine. No, you don't. No, you don't. They're gone. You got the there. There are no Catholics. There are no Baptists in the millennium. No Presbyterians. You're either the Church, you're the Jew, or you're a Gentile. What about America? There is no Americans. I don't like it. Tough woogies. From the border onto the East Sea. That's the Mediterranean. This is the East Side. No, wait, East Sea, that would be the Great the, the, uh, the Dead Sea. Excuse me. That's the Dead Sea. And you can see any map. A lot of people disagree with this. A lot of governments would disagree with this. I was told by a missionary that, that, that that's in the Middle East that in their public school system, when you pull, pull that map down, that land is not marked as Israel. They don't identify Israel in the Middle East nations. 
we go, our army's going there to help protect Afghanistan, help to protect these people. We're going, and you can't even bring a Bible. How many soldiers I knew went off to Afghanistan? They are Christians, and the first thing they had to do was turn in their Bible. Nuke them. That's how you get rid of your, your enemy. Well, it's not nice. All right, then you got the problems. You got the problems with the problems you got of Middle East today. In the south side, the south down north, Tamar, even to the waters of strife in Kadesh. Kadesh Barnea, that's where Israel went and sent spies. To the river, the Great Sea, and that Great Sea again, the Mediterranean Sea. And if you look on some maps, you'll see there's a river there, and it's called the River of Egypt. That's not in Egypt. There's this little body of a river, and it's not on all the maps. You really got to find a good map. It has this little, sometimes it just has a river, and it's not labeled. That river is called the River of Egypt. There's only one Bible map that I ever had. And I don't even know where I, I don't know if I was in school or where I, he talked about it. And then finally, oh man, look, yeah, it's called, the, it's called the River of Egypt. And I have not been able to find it in the maps. Only seen only one map. And I only heard one man taught, teach it. So it had to probably be in school. So the mass of Israel is three bodies of water. Actually four. Mediterranean Sea, the, the, the uh, River of Egypt, the Dead Sea, and the Jordan River. And then you got the northern border, Damascus, Assyria. Probably will go up to the, Ephes to the Euphrates River. To the waters of strife of Enkidish, Kadesh, the river of the Great Sea. This is the south side, southward. So where Israel sent the spies in, the west side also shall be the great sea from the border. So the, we're on the west side. Till a man come over against Hamath. And there's that Hamath. So we went completely around. We started off on the east. We went north. We went uh, west, no, went west, north, east, and then south. So shall ye divide the land unto the according of the tribes of Israel. And we'll do that in the next chapter 48. Lord willing. And shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot. For inheritance unto... It's funny, he says he divided by lot. God is going to give us the 12 divisions. The lot is, is the family. Where they're going to live. You don't get to go in the land and name it and claim it. That's what I'm trying to say. You can't say, well, you know, this big shot, this big company with billions and gazillions amount of money, he's going to buy these. No, that ain't going to happen. Proverbs says, don't you move that ancient landmark. And I wonder if that land is going to somehow go back the way it was in Joshua's time. Where Caleb said, I want that mountain. And I wonder if his family is going to get that mountain back. But the divisions of the tribes in the land is different from, which I really need. I have not laid them both out than the tribes of uh, in Joshua's time. That'd be some kind of thing to lay out. Lay out both inheritances of Joshua and chapter 47 and 48 of Ezekiel. I wonder if there's any thing to that. Which shall beget children among you. But we left something out. Watch this. He shall divide it lot by inheritance. Lot means draw stores, uh, even or odd numbers on the, you know, red dye, blue ball, whatever. And to the strangers that sojourn among you. Who's the strangers? 
That's the Gentiles. The land is given to Israel and the strangers. Where is the church? That's given by Jesus Christ. Jesus said, well done, God, good, faithful servant. Rule over this many cities. Not every Christian is going to get that inheritance. Our inheritance is we get the, a rulership. We get to be kings of the king. King of kings. Who is that? See, Jesus is not the king of kings today. He will be the king of kings when he sits on, on David's throne. Well, who's the king? Us. The Christians. And that is a right. That doesn't cut all oh, I'm saved by getting inherited. No, no, no. That's like the crowns. If you don't serve the Lord, you don't give up for the Lord, you don't do anything for the Lord, you ain't getting no crown. And the easiest crown to get is the Lord's coming back. I just wish he hurry. Yep. And there are four others. So there's the Gentiles, which shall beget children among you. So there's begatting, there's, there's babies born in the millennium. Can you imagine being born not knowing anything about the tribulation period, not knowing anything of... You say, well, when did that happen in history? You imagine growing up, being born as a Jew... And your parents survived the Holocaust and you weren't born in that? you imagine hearing the horrific stories of your parents in the tribulation period as much as the children heard the horrific stories of their parents and grandparents in the Holocaust? That stupid whoopee. Uh, the, the, the Holocaust wasn't about race. Oh, shut up, woman. Why don't you go learn who you're supposed to be and not with another woman? You have nothing. You don't even know what sex you're supposed to be dating. So don't tell me what you have to say, whoopee. You need to get a whoopee cushion shut up. Adolf Hitler hated the Jews and hated anybody who sported the Jews. You tell her I said that too. You tell her sodomy. Is an abomination of God in the Bible. Romans chapter 1. Don't have to go into the Old Testament for that. So there are Gentiles and there are Jewish people. They're all having babies. <laughs> and Jesus says, suffer the little children to come unto me. We shall beget children among you. They shall be unto you as born in the country. So where does where do you get where, where does America get? All right, if you're born if, if if your parents were illegal in this country and you are born and you become a naturalized citizen, Ezekiel forty seven twenty two. But we're not talking about America. You know, America steals a lot of the replacement theology. You know, America will sell out the Jews for that Arabian oil. I know, you don't like that. I don't care you don't like it. They're going to be Gentiles born in the land of Israel, and they're going to be considered part of Israel in that land. They shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. Why? These are the Gentiles that helped the Jews in the tribulation period. So in return, you help and bless them for them helping and blessing you. And it shall come to pass, and it will, that in what tribe the sojourner, I mean, the stranger sojourneth, there shall ye give him his inheritance, saith the Lord God. That's God saying it. It's the land of Israel 
But the strangers are allowed there, and don't forget the Christians running around. I don't know what happens to Christians that don't get no rewards and don't get no inheritance. I don't know what happens to them. Maybe they get the waiting room. Maybe God gives them the waiting room. They got old, uh, crumply, stale daily bread. <laughs> yeah, read this crap for a while. How oh, you are wrong. I forget what the Baptists call there. You know, the Baptists got the same thing as the Catholic. They just got a name changed. Name changed to protect the innocent so we don't offend nobody. Be in season, out of season, reboot, reboot. I, you know, I heard some, well, we don't talk about other religions here. I do. And I'm especially going to preach about the Catholic Church because they damn most of my family. He said, damn. Damn, 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 damn. It was, it's like the old beaver. Old Grandpa Beaver. Grandpa Beaver, what'd you used to do? Damn, 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 damn. That's all the beaver does. He damn. Eats wood and damns. That land belongs to God's people. And God's people are Israel. We are to pray for Israel. We are not to curse Israel. We're not to joke about Israel. We are to help the Jews. Because when you bless them, God will bless you. And everything we're reading about is future and it will happen. Glory to God.